Hi guys, welcome to part two. So if you've seen part one, which I hope you do, do watch that. The link will be in the description. What we did there was we basically looked at the same exercise, which is going up and down the C minor scale, E becoming E flat. That's how you get your C minor. First four, first five notes, and we interacted our two hands using beat division. So beat division by two would imply, you know, one and two and three and four, and beat division by three will imply one and a two and a three and a four and a with the pulse, of course. Uh, and for the for most part, I think we did the lesson at ninety beats per minute. So if you take just the pulse, it would have been. Divide by two, divide by three, and divide by four. Right, and then we looked at different coordination, different coordination systems between the two hands. One hand plays faster speed, double speed, three speed, or four speed, while the other hand will play the pulse, and then. you flipped your hands now moving forward i'm going to explore something called as the dotted time feel or the dotted note feel okay uh, just to give you a sample of it if this is the pulse it will be something like dang 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 right very modern pop if you ask me you know very edm very disco that sort of a vibe so to get that on to the piano so first of all a little theory behind this dotted thing you're dividing the beat into four units so if you take one e and a two e and a this is how we divide by four a two e and a three e and a four e and a tuck 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 what happens with the accents will be you have to divide this division Into parts of three, or you accent it in three, even though you're dividing by four. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Now naturally, you'd want to one e and a two e. You would want to play like that. These are all the down beats. So you're dividing this division, which is which is sixteenth notes. You're hitting one for every four sixteenth notes, but that's not sounding groovy. right quite lazy so what you do to generate the dotted feel would be you package it in sets of 3 so that will be 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 5 e and a 6 e and so it just goes on and on to a point that you don't even know what time signature you're on to be honest so uh, maybe you could say it's a 3 4 which keeps resolving but even if you don't know it it becomes a kind of a feeling a dotted time feel which will be 1 e and 2 and 3 and 4 and And what's really cool about this is it is enunciating all the sixteenth note hit points and never repeating them. You know, at least in a sequence to sh to show you slowly: one e and a two e and a three e and a. You saw that all the four unique uh, syllables: one e and a two e and a three e. All that happened together. So that's the beauty of dotted notes. Um, A lot of rock bands use it as well. If you look at U2, the delay of the guitar, uh, it's also called popularly as the edge delay, and uh, that's exactly the dotted feel. So basically, you're taking a time unit, which in this case is 1.5 times the beat value, and repeating every delayed note or next note or next occurrence by 1.5 times the value, and that is essentially what a dotted note means in music. If you take a dotted minim or a dotted half note it's going to be the note which is a minim which lasts two beats and the dot adds half of that note's value so if you take 
टू प्लस हाफ ऑफ टू इज टू प्लस एंड आई एम कंफ्यूजिंग माई सेल्फ विद दिस मैथ्स बट एनी वे टू प्लस हाफ ऑफ टू इक्वल्स टू प्लस वन इक्वल्स टू थ्री इफ दैट डजेंट मेक सेंस टू यू इट्स ओके अ डॉटेड मिनिम हैज थ्री काउंट्स ओके सो इट्स ऑलवेज वन पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स द नोट वैल्यू सो इफ यू टेक अ डॉटेड क्रॉच इट और अ डॉटेड क्वार्टर नोट दैट विल बी the cro- the crotchet plus a dot that will be 1.5 counts for the note however for this lesson we are trying to look at a dotted six a dotted eighth note so that means it's going to be 0.75 times of the beat 0.75 well that's a little uh, annoying to take in so much i understand if you're not a maths person uh, but it's very simple write one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a and package it in accents of three so one e and a two let me try and tap those accents here one e and a two and e four e and a e one e and a two and e okay having something like this a shaker will really help you to to feel this music okay we've done a lesson on how to play the shaker so uh, it will be in the description check it out i there's there's some it's a it, there's a lot of technique used to play this it may not come to a lot of you naturally so do watch a video we've done this video on basically how to do this how to play a shaker it's not as easy as it seems there's a lot more variations going on so watch the lesson okay so you go one so you have to now feel this you have to internalize the 16th note thing in your head because i want your left hand or whichever hand starts first to still play the pulse let's do that with a click on 90 okay now while this is happening you need to feel the 16s so that's what i was doing earlier right on the shaker now the dotted okay that's just me trying to get the hits out with my voice right through some wanna be beatboxing but now you can try it out on the keyboard start with one note okay so one e and a two e and a three e just sounds awesome right you can do this for hours it just sounds really cool to maybe you could just play a chord but now coming back to the drill at hand you need to do that sa re ga ma pa ma ga re sa re ga ma pa ma this is really weird right i am singing something completely off the left hand's radar but they work together because of the maths which uh, unites the two hands so it's just 1.5 times faster this hand or uh, yeah pam 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 tak 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 so okay let's go back to the pulse in the bass there we go finally they overlap you know it took so long again that was a long amount of notes per cycle but you need to feel these dotted notes so let's try that again pulse in the left hand well now we can let me flip it around pulse in the right hand 
this is also what a lot of drummers do i've pretty much learned this from drummers whatever they used to do with one limb versus the other limb or maybe one limb with one foot they'll start flipping it around and that's what makes for very good solid rock solid practice so now you have to do dotted in the left and it finally unite and overlap right so that's the dotted feeling so again in a nutshell you're dividing the beat by four units four equal units but then the way you're accent accenting the subdivisions is different it's not one e and a two e and a three e and a you're going one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a four and um at um a pow boom tau tau and so on right so in a sense this dotted rhythm uh, is almost like its own pulse you know it's almost like this is the way you're feeling the music and uh, i would love to do another lesson on just the dotted rhythm because there's so much to talk about how you can integrate it into any time signature and kind of really shape the song the way you want it to okay or just add it as a flavor to an existing piece of music okay so that's about the dotted rhythm and as you're supposed to practice one hand will do the pulse either the right or the left and while one hand is doing the pulse you need to work your dotted magic with the other hand so again dotted in a nutshell basically is adding 1.5 times the value of a particular note and it's always kind of landing on the odd divisions because if you have something where you're dividing by 2 and then you do the dotted rhythms it's going to not do that 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 it's going to be that 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 it's always going to go against the existing divisions uh and in our example if you divide by 4 one e at one e at and e and four e right it's always again so it's little tricky uh if you haven't watched part 1 and digested that try part 1 first and then come to this uh, very important okay so that's about our dotted another thing which i'd like to suggest would be triplets okay now in the earlier part i talked about eighth note triplets eighth note triplets divide the pulse into three units da ba da da ba da da ba da one and a two so we ended up doing that tak ch tak ch right now imagine that imagine the division takita takita 1 and 2 and but now don't play all those divisions don't play ja 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 you want to do lesser so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and so this gives you like a polyrhythmic feel or what we call popularly as quarter note triplets the quarter note triplets divide the minim or the 1 2 3 this 1 2 divide that by 3 okay so so if this is my main beat which is now slower okay divide you're getting that triplet this is called as a quarter note triplet Let's compare this with eighth note triplets. Quarter. Doom. Pa pa pa. If you are an Indian uh, student, you'll recognize this a lot in folk music, Bollywood music. Doom ta ta doom ta ta doom ta ta din ta ta. Okay. So. that okay so this is what we call as a quarter note triplet or like a polyrhythm of 3 meeting 2 or 2 meeting 3 so the goal for us now is to try and get triplets quarter note triplets in the last video we looked at eighth note triplets so we have to get quarter note triplets in one of the hands and the other hand will do the pulse so if i maintain that This is just two notes. 
C and C. Then play the pattern in the left. So triplets. Tak tak tak. Then the exercise. Feel that triplet. One and a two and a one. So you're dividing by three, and you go one and a two and a three and a four and okay. And of course, you can flip the two hands around. So you go, you know, pulse in this particular hand. First, perhaps get the two hands working with a singular note, maybe C. the right hands doing the pulse left triplets yeah that was quite a workout even for me as you can see by my expressions uh, because it's it's a job whenever we play triplets there are so many ways to have fun with it and uh, when you have so many patterns and so many permutations to kind of flip your brain especially as a pianist is always tough at least for me at most levels it's tough if you want your left hand to do that right hand to do that it's a job okay so moving forward what you could also do is you know do all sorts of combinations of your two hands you can perhaps look at eighth notes in one particular hand like you know and do try a dotted feel in the other other hand so One e and a two e and a three. Remember the dotted which we did at the first part of the lesson, and we want to do eight notes here: one and two and three and four and one and and so on. This will make sure that things are going to go absolutely crazy. And the challenge of this exercise, which I found while doing it myself, is you you just cannot change the melody. The melody is sa re ga ma pa ma ga re. So that's the thing which kind of really messes with your head. It's not it's not the two hands actually. It's also the melody because you're feeling the melody in so many ways. You know, it, the same melody which you do every other day. is just starting to sound different each time that's what messes with the head it's not the hands in my opinion it's the tune it's the it's the sound of the tune so whether you like it or not your ears are always working as a musician so these sounds will hit you you need to embrace it so don't play the piano like a dummy as i say that means use your ears at all times uh, i understand some of you read music you can stare at the notes uh, some of you you know would watch a youtube video and it will be like so well organized it will be slow steady you know and you do it with that particular video on youtube but the most important thing is you need to be wired to this music you need to be naturally playing it and enjoying yourself through the music and the enjoyment is also a function of one's confidence so when you're you know showing that passion while you play the music it means that you know your stuff it means you've practiced you're not hesitant you're just uh, looking at it like a normal music lover or a music fan okay The last variation for this lesson would be accents again but now I'm just going to give you one so that we we can dive in a lot more into the subject in future lessons but 
accents now if you divide by 2 let me just divide by 2 in the right <laughs> we did this last video right dividing by 2 but now divide by 2 but accent in 3's what I mean by that is the speed of your right hand will be double of the left hand but the accents are in sets of 3 let me show you that 1 and 2 but that's dividing the click by 2 so you feel oh it's 3 but actually it's dividing by 2 you know one and two and see dividing by two one and two and three so normally we'll go like that now we are doing boom tau boom tau and now of course the herculean task of putting this all together with the pulse right and now divide by 2 divide by 2 with the accent there we go the music just changes over its head doesn't it left hand pulse and then of course you can flip the two hands around I'm not going to show you that I guess you get the idea so in this rather more intermediate finger exercise or finger independence building lesson we've taken the same the set of notes we've looked at the dotted feeling where you divide by four but you go in sets of threes then you look at the triplet feeling uh, creating quarter note triplets by dividing by three but going in sets of twos one and a two and a three and a four that indian rhythm that dum dum tuck dum dum while the uh, dotted feel the tuck dun ah boom tuck, very edm very disco so we've done that then we looked at finally accenting so these are just intermediate variants of the same drill i would still suggest go back to part one do all the variations and intertwine them together you don't have to necessarily follow a specific order once you've done all the parts you can just piece them together and more importantly have fun uh, start slow my metronome has been on 90 for this whole lesson i think 90 works for general practice for these sort of things but yeah you're free to just change it around to maybe 70 or 60 or 80 or whatever you find comfortable you're also free to speed it up you can go to 100 110 120 uh, but like i said at the very beginning in part one the metronome is just an a third party electronic device you should not be a slave to the metronome you should first try to develop internal timing and a clock within you once you seem to be good at your own natural timing sense you then play it with a click and move forward right guys thanks for watching again this is jason here from nathaniel school of music and uh, if you like the video do give it a like or a thumbs up whatever we you can see there uh, share the video with your musician friends leave us a comment with stuff you'd like me to teach in the future and uh, you can also consider being our a patreon member by uh, heading over to the patreon link where you get all our notes for all these lessons which we put out regularly and uh, if you find yourself more in the beginner segment of piano learners we have a members only foundation piano course very structured from the very basics you just have to go there and um, just be part be a member so you get this portal where you have a bunch of members only videos which we've put out part by part uh, all the way from the basics and uh, that will be a great learning tool for someone who's perhaps new at the instrument right see you guys in the next lesson bye